For 50 years, AMP has been a leader in supplying quality products and tooling. We know that the highest quality product can only be guaranteed with the highest quality of tooling. This AMPAC program is divided into three modules to help you better understand the AMPAC TAP system. Module 1 will highlight AMPAC products and installation procedures. Module 2 will cover tool maintenance and cleaning procedures. And Module 3, the last module, will cover the AMPAC Hot Stick Kit. AMPAC TAPs are widely used in electrical power distribution because they are a fast and reliable means for tapping power off transmission and distribution lines. AMPAC TAPs can also be removed and reused. TAPs and stirrups are available for a wide variety of applications. Components that make up the AMPAC system include the tool which consists of a head and power unit, color-coded shells contain a gunpowder charge that is used to actuate the tool, and the tap. The tap consists of a wedge which is forced by the tool into the C-member. Both the wedge and C-members are supplied with a synthetic oxide inhibitor compound. AMP has available two types of taps, aluminum and copper. The aluminum tap is used to connect aluminum to aluminum, aluminum to copper, and copper to copper wires. The copper wire applications are restricted to above ground and non-hostile environments only. The copper tap can be used on copper wires and in direct buried or overhead applications. Both types are available to cover a wide range of wire sizes. The aluminum taps can be used on various types of wires including double AC, triple AC, and ACSR. Listed on the back of the C member is the correct color-coded shell to be used. Listed on the tapered wedge are the various wire sizes to accommodate the large variety of wire combinations. The large wire groove is also coded. Markings are printed to be read up and down the column, not diagonally. Taps are packaged in color-coded bags to correspond to the color-coded marking on the tap. The Type 2 tap is an improved version of the small red-coated tap because there is a lesser chance of the wedge being cocked in the C-member during application. There is also a uniform positioning notch for the tool which allows the C-member to be located in the blue notch, eliminating the need for a red platform. Type 2 taps use a white-coated shell rather than a red-coated shell, even though they have the same wire range. The Ampac stirrup assembly consists of a wedge and a tin-plated copper bale affixed to a C-member. Bale sizes available include number 2, one aught, 2 aught, and 4 aught. The Ampac application tool consists of two components, the head and power unit. Two types of heads are available, small and large. The small head is used to apply small red-coated taps and medium blue-coated taps as well as the copper and type 2 taps. The large head is used to apply the large yellow-coated taps. Both heads are interchangeable with the power unit. However, they are not available separately. On the small head, there are two positioning notches to position the tap for firing. The bottom notch, color-coded red, uses red-coated taps. The top notch, color-coded blue, uses blue and white-coated taps. Upon firing, the wedge is driven into the lance, creating a locking feature on the completed tap. On the large tool head, there is only one positioning notch. This cutaway shows the inside of the power unit. Let's briefly explain each feature. The threaded coupling houses the ram and accepts the tool head. The aluminum crush sleeve is a safety feature designed to protect the ram in case of over travel. The stainless steel ram drives the wedge into the C-member and acts as a firing pin for the tool. The coupling nut holds the two moving parts of the tool and acts as the housing for the fail-safe groove machined in the coupling. The breech houses the shell and shell ejector. The ejector sleeve is used to eject the spent shell from the breech. The breech cap assembly is threaded onto the rear of the power unit and contains the gas release knob and piercer pin. The gas release knob contains the release path for the gas. The piercer pin pierces the shell wall, providing a path for the gas to escape. The last feature is the anti-bind washer, which prevents the seizure of the gas release knob. This cutaway shows the power unit with the shell in place. Notice how the ram fits inside the shell and is isolated from the primer by the safety prongs on the gas jack. 
The Ampac tap system uses four color-coded shells, each containing a different powder charge. The red, or smaller shell, is used to apply red-coated taps and is used to remove red, white, and blue-coated taps. The white shell is used to apply type 2 and copper taps, but should not be used for removal. The blue or medium shell is used to apply blue-coated taps and also to remove yellow-coated taps. The largest shell is color-coded yellow and is used to apply yellow-coated taps. Yellow shells should never be used for removal. This cutaway of the shell will help you better understand its operation. The shell casing is a polyethylene plastic which contains a retaining ring for the gas check. The primer and powder charge are standard shotgun primer and powder. The safety prongs isolate the firing pin from the primer until it is collapsed by tightening the tool onto the tap. These shells cannot be used in any type of firearm, and the Ampac tool will not accept any other type. This is a portion of the Ampac tap selection chart. Any conductor listed on the top half of the chart can be connected to any conductor listed on the bottom half of the chart. The chart is read vertically. To read the chart, find your largest conductor at the top of the chart. Then read down and scan across the bottom of the chart until you find your second conductor. Before we review installation procedures, remember that the use of Ampac taps may result in exposure to energized power lines. All applicable safety precautions must be followed. Before installing an Ampac tap, Thoroughly clean the wires by an approved cleaning method. After the wire is clean, place the tap wire into the bottom groove of the C-member. Then place the C-member on the through wire. This method prevents placing your body in a possible series path. The back of the C-member should now be facing the installer. Insert the wedge with the large wire groove, identified by a letter or number, aligned with the large wire. Finger tighten and tap the wedge into the C-member to seat it the tap should now be self-supporting. This illustration shows the incorrect method of installing a tap on an energized line. The method shown is unsafe because it places the installer in a series path. To load the tool, select the proper shell for the application. Remove the breech cap from the tool, making sure the ram is retracted into the power unit. Insert the shell, keeping your fingers and thumb clear of the tool. Always load the tool in the vertical position. Grasp the coupling nut and tighten the breech cap assembly until it bottoms. Tighten the gas release knob. This prevents gas leakage and allows the piercer pin to penetrate the base of the shell. After loading the tool, check the following three points before positioning the tool onto the connector. One, make sure that the ram is retracted. If not, remove the shell and repeat the loading procedures. Two, make sure that the breech cap is tightened. And three, make sure that the gas release knob is tight. After checking these points, the tool can be positioned on the tap. To position the tap in the tool, the C-member must be located in the correct positioning notch with the open side facing the tool head. Turn the coupling nut until the power unit is seated firmly against the wedge. When applying red-coated taps, the auxiliary platform must be used. Blue-coated taps do not require a platform. Type 2 taps are color-coded white and do not require the auxiliary platform. The C-member is positioned in the blue notch of the tool head. If the tool is correctly positioned on the tap, it should be self-supporting. Before firing the tool, check the following points. 1. Make sure that the connector is properly positioned in the tool. 2. Make sure that the power unit is firmly seated against the wedge. 3. The breech cap must be tightened. And 4. Check that the gas release knob is tight. After checking all these points, the tool is now ready for firing. Although the tool is self-supporting, you can steady it by holding the breech cap assembly. The tool is fired by striking the gas release knob with a sharp blow from a hammer. Be sure to stay clear of the hammer and tool when striking. To release the gas, turn the gas release knob counterclockwise. Hold the tool away from your body as the gas is released. If the gas does not escape, close the gas release knob and hit the tool again. Then, release the gas. To detail what just happened when the tool was fired, the top illustration shows that the safety prongs prevent the firing pin from contacting the primer. 
The safety prongs were crushed by hand-tightening the coupling nut, which firmly seated the ram against the wedge. During firing, expanding gases caused the ram to force the wedge into the C-member. The retracting piercer pin allowed the gases to escape. This cutaway illustration explains in detail the gas release action. Before tightening the gas release knob, notice that the piercer pin is away from the shell. After tightening the gas release knob, the pin has pierced the base of the shell and remains in this position during firing. After firing, by turning the gas release knob, the pin is retracted, allowing the gas to escape. Remove the tool from the tap by turning the coupling nut until the tool can be removed. Grasp the coupling nut and turn the breech cap assembly and remove it from the tool. Pull down on the ejector sleeve to eject the spent shell. Make sure that you always point the tool down and away from anyone before ejecting the shell. Replace the breech cap assembly after shell removal. If for some reason the spent shell cannot be removed from the breech, Replace the breech cap and return the tool to your amp representative for repair. When installing yellow-coated taps using the large tool head, check the position of the yellow-coated band on the power unit. This yellow band must be adjacent to or in front of the yellow indicator on the side of the tool. If these bands do not align, check your wire and tap combinations. After firing the yellow shell, wait approximately 10 seconds before releasing the gas. This will allow time for the plastic shell casing to harden after the high temperature of firing made it soft. All installed Ampac taps should be visually inspected for a locking tab feature. This visual indication ensures a good connection has been made. Here are some of the safety precautions for you to follow after firing the tool. If the gas does not release, retighten the gas release knob and strike the tool again with a hammer. If the gas still does not release, make sure your fingers are away from the ram area. Point the breech toward the ground and twist a screwdriver between the ejector sleeve and breech threads. When you do not get a gas release, always check the breech for a dislodged primer cap. Also, check the piercer pin's length because it may not be long enough to pierce the shell wall. Never remove shells with pliers or by prying under the shell lip. If the shell cannot be ejected, contact your local AMP representative.